So let me tell you a little bit about my background and why I ran for office and, and I think what, what we as a state has accomplished. So as was said earlier, I got my start uh, with Yahoo. We actually opened the whole East Coast office of Yahoo out of my apartment, you know, way back when. We built a company that was worth, at our height, about $120 billion, which meant at the time we were worth more than uh, Disney, Viacom, and News Corp combined. One of my favorite stories of all time about that moment, about those times, was right after, you all remember when AOL bought Time Warner, right? $160 billion, it failed miserably. But I remember that afternoon, we were in a conference room having a serious discussion, should we buy Disney? I was 28 years old and we're talking about buying Disney, okay? But most of that time, after New York, I was out in Silicon Valley. And I saw some really exciting things going on. I saw a real innovation ecosystem. Okay? Think about this for a moment. In a 10 mile radius, and this is in the late 90s, you had Yahoo, Google, and eBay, three companies. At the time, and it's a lot more today, created 30,000 jobs. Every single one of those jobs were instant millionaires. Imagine how much money that put into the economy. I had a little kid, went to a children's clothing store, lying out, of, out the door. We would go and buy cars. We'd try to negotiate. Salesperson said, I got 80 other people that want to buy this car. I'm not negotiating with you. So you could see how the economy was thriving back then because there was so much money in it. Now, has any one of you ever been down 101 between San Francisco and San Jose? Okay. What do you see? You see Facebook, Twitter, Google, Yahoo, eBay, Apple, Oracle, Genentech. Seagate. Now, Seagate, is the Seagate there? They, no, they're down in Seagate, I think, <laughs> further south, um, on the other side of the Santa Cruz Mountains, I think. But now, let's picture between Palm Beach County and Miami, Dade, let's go down 95 for a second. What do we see? We see pill mills, strip clubs, bail bondsmen, trial attorneys. It's a little different. It's not quite the same. Okay, so when I moved to Florida, um, and I had, I, I was recruited here to run a business, and I saw we don't have an innovation economy here, and that was my whole thesis for running for office. If you're going to build an economy, and if you want to use the old analogy, which does work here, of the three-legged stool, I hate to use it because I hate to feel cliche. You know, I'd stand up before you as a politician and say, I promise, with my thumb up. The only promise I'll ever give you is the promise never to make a promise. But beyond that, there is this analogy works. There's three ways you build an economy. And you have to do all three. But one leg of the stool is much longer than the other two legs. Number one is you try to recruit outside business. That's, you know, Hertz coming here and JetBlue coming here. And that's good stuff. But it's not the largest leg of the stool. The second is, what do we do to um, the blocking and tackling the day-to-day -day of Tallahassee? Whether it's property insurance, taxes, uh, uh, tort reform, whatever it may be, that's the day-to-day -day blocking and tackling we do. Not irrelevant, but not the most important leg of the stool. The most important leg of the stool is entrepreneurship. It's the things that do not exist in Tallahassee, necessarily. It's beneath the deaths of Tallahassee. And that's the thesis that I started with and why I ran for office. So I'm going to my eighth session, and I'm gonna tell you a lot about what we've done over the last eight years, because I will start with this. One of the things that we are so good in Florida, we, the best in the entire country, by far, there's not a better state in the country than, than us at this. We're really good at telling the rest of the country how much we suck. We're really, really, really good at that. Okay? The best. Well, we don't. We really, honestly don't. And what I'm about to tell you today, I really believe you will feel a lot more positive about the direction of this state than you may have felt before you came in here today. Okay? To build an innovation economy, 
a lot goes into it. It's not simple. You cannot simply say, elect me and I will create jobs. It doesn't work that way. Okay? There's a lot of space between ideas and jobs to build this ecosystem. It's complex. And I'll end this story with a real good case study that actually just came about this week. Okay? If you're going to build an innovation economy, you must, must start with innovation. Where does innovation and ideas come from? They come out of our university system. Okay? That is the engine. That is the key. Whether it's a public university, a non-for-profit private university, or a for-profit university, okay? you have to start with the innovation. Then you must start with the incubation. So we created something called the Florida Institute of Commercialization which is at University of Florida and at FAU. And what that does, okay, is it incubates the ideas that come out of our public university system and our research centers. Richard's going to speak a little later, and he is from Torrey Pines, mission critical to this state's innovation economy, and I'm thrilled. I can't wait to hear your speech after this. But we have to have an incubator, and we created that. What does an incubator do? It's very simple. It takes our great ideas that come out of our public university systems and it provides the legal, the business planning, the accounting, the patent, the executive, the executive recruitment, the proof of sales, all the things that are required to start packaging up a company. And we have that. And as of now, that is funded. I, I think they have $15 million or so. But they've, e they've given grants or loans or even taken equity in about 25 different companies. But what's important to that is the advisory board is made up of every major venture capitalist in the United States. So they're seeing these opportunities today. And they're seeing them when they're just seated. The next part of the innovation economy, after the research and innovation, you have your incubator. Then you need your seed capital. Okay, Because you can have the greatest idea in the world and if it, you're not going to commercialize it, to me, it's not relevant. It just isn't. You've got to commercialize it. Okay? So we created the Seed Capital Fund, the Florida Seed Capital Fund, to actually invest tranches of fifty to $300,000 matching funds on the equity side. So that's the next step. Now you've got your innovation. You've incubated it, you've got your business plan, you've got your patents ready, uh, you have a proof of sales, and you've got some seed funding, so you're starting to see some revenue. Okay? Well, the next thing we did is we created the Florida Opportunity Fund. The Florida Opportunity Fund is the first round of institutional capital. Okay? And they'll invest half a million, a million, five million, whatever it does. They'll bring other co-investors together, and now I'm out in the institutional market. So now I can start growing my company more. And I can start growing it, maybe not necessarily to profitability, but I can start seeing real revenue. And I'm starting to see five, 10, $25 million in revenue. And the last piece, which is the key piece to this whole thing, is the Florida Growth Fund. So we created the Florida Growth Fund. What's the Florida Growth Fund? The Florida Growth Fund is a later and exp expansion and later stage venture capital private equity fund that's up to $2 billion that invests in Florida technology companies. Now, obviously, that invests in later stage. You've got to have you know, $20 million plus an EBITDA to do that. But it's huge tranches of dollars. So I've just explained the whole continuum of innovation to exit, because eventually you're going to sell, you're going to go public, and whatnot. Now, politicians talk about jobs. Again, jobs is hollow rhetoric. If you build your business through our process, then as a result, the companies will hire. Right? I can tell you for me, I will never, ever, ever, if I'm starting a company, I've started a lot of businesses, take one dollar from anyone that says, you must, if you're going to take a dollar, then in return you have to give me a job because you've just handcuffed me. Let me build my business. As a result of building my business, I will hire and the economy will grow. This is the ecosystem. And believe it or not, we got it. We don't know it, but people know it. I go to 
uh, 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 private equity uh, conferences. I work for a big private equity firm today. I go to venture capital conferences all over the country. There is not a state in America that has created the full continuum to the, as much as we have. It just isn't. We are further along in the entire innovation to exit continuum than any state in America. Okay? Tallahassee does not know this, but they don't need to know this. My point is they don't need to know this because the foundation has been built and it's going to grow itself. We don't need Tallahassee necessarily to do this. And what's great, and the reason it's an ecosystem, is because it all works together. Okay? Everyone sits on everyone's advisory boards. Um, everyone looks at different business plans together. Most of these, everyone seems to have an office at the University of Florida. We tried to put them all together. Okay? So it's working together. Now I'm going to give you a case study of how it works. Okay? So there's a, a company, a spinoff, right out of the University of Florida called Sidera. Uh, Richard, I think I have that one right. Sidera came out today in the biospace. Okay. Well, on, we, um, myself and some others, went up to Boston a couple years ago, and we identified a big venture capital firm called MPM, MPM Capital, one of the biggest biotech venture capital firms in the world. Their big claim to fame now is they're the people behind the company 23andMe, which has been getting a lot of press. You may be familiar with 23andMe and the genetic testing kind of that, they, that they've been doing where you can find out what, you know, if you have 60% chance of being a heroin addict someday, right? And it was founded by Ann Wyskowski, whose, whose husband is Sergey Brin, the founder of Google. Okay, so 23andMe, we went to 23andMe and said, we have this whole continuum here. Why don't you come and Come to Florida, check out what we're doing. Okay? MPM came down here, we pitched them and pitched them and pitched them, and they said there is so much going on here, we're going to raise a venture capital fund specific to Florida. Okay, so now we're bringing all the private capital here. Well, they did their first deal the other day, and it was a spinoff out of the University of Florida called Sidera. It's a bio company, I don't know as much about them as I, I probably should, but what made this exciting, okay, it was uh, uh, the company raised about $32 million, okay? We had some of the best researchers in the world doing due diligence on this company in Florida, and as part of that deal, Novartis has an option to buy within about two years for $300 million, this company, uh, this company. so now we have one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world, a $60 billion company, you know, in revenue, coming down here and saying, we're looking at Florida companies. That would not have happened if we didn't have the ecosystem. And I can guarantee you there are so many other funds, venture capital funds, uh, nationally and globally, that are right now raising Florida-only funds. Funds just for Florida. Okay, this is all amazing because we have the private dollars that are starting to come in. For the Florida Growth Fund, one of the most exciting things we did was the fund itself, but when we gave the mandate to manage the fund to a group called Hamilton Lane. Why? Because Hamilton Lane is one of the most prestigious fund-to-fund -fund managers in the world. So they can bring capital from all over the world to invest in Florida companies. Now, a deal is a deal. Venture capitalists will find the good deal. But what do they traditionally do? They find the deal and they take them to Silicon Valley or to Austin, Texas or the Research Triangle and they leave them. Now, because we have the ecosystem and because we have the right people managing our investments, those big capital dollars that are starting to come in, they're keeping the companies in Florida. So it's no longer, let's give money to Amazon.com to build a fulfillment, fulfillment center, let's build the next Amazon.com from scratch in Florida. Keep this in mind. Whether it's Google or Yahoo or Microsoft or Facebook or Dell, what do they all have in common? They were all started by students while they were at college. Every single one of them. Okay. We recognize that. 
the ecosystem drives that. It takes the entrepreneurs with the great ideas, 22-year-old students or 25-year-old graduate students, or whatever it may be, we bring the capital down, we walk the halls of the university, we incubate it, and guess what? We end up with a real innovation economy. Because when the Florida economy collapsed, which was inevitable, right? The great Ponzi scheme. You move down here, we build you a house, we make money. Right? That's the great Ponzi scheme. The reason our recovery took so long is because we had no economy to back it up. Okay? Now we're building this incredible innovation economy with help from people like, like Richard Houghton, who you're going to hear from a little later, and the research and innovation that they're all doing. So now, if there's a global crash, we have the backup for it. We are building this. This stuff takes a long time to build. But to get from innovation to jobs, it's not hollow space. A lot goes into it. And this state has completely set the ecosystem up. The process is in place. It's working well together. And I will tell you, we are, have more pieces of it, as I said, than any state in the country. We are the envy of states all over the country with what we're doing. Tallahassee may not know it, but the rest of the world does. And it's important for us to stop telling the world that we suck, because we don't. Okay, We truly, honestly don't. And the, we are not a leader, we are the leader you know, when it comes to having the ecosystem. I appreciate Tax Watch for letting me speak tonight. Uh, I've wanted to get this message out for a long time. I've been doing it over pieces over the years. But this is the very first time that I've been able to speak and feel confident that we're speaking about the system is complete, it's done, now it's just got to grow. Thank you.